All right, so today what we are going to do is discuss glycogen metabolism. We will have already built on a lot of concepts, particularly in the metabolism of carbohydrates, where you guys have already learned about metabolism of glucose in terms of the breakdown and generation of energy in glycolysis. And then you've also talked about gluconeogenesis, you've talked about the TCA cycle, and you've actually obtained these concepts. But this time around, I want to talk about a whole new direction that glucose tends to take, which is the direction of glycogen. You would be pleased to know that glycogen is a homopolysaccharide of glucose. So, from your structure of glucose, you would have an alpha D glucose here. This is your alpha D glucose, carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. This glucose is the one that is used to make glycogen. The alpha D glucose. Alpha simply because the hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon is actually below the plane. So this is the one that makes up glycogen. So structure-wise, the glycogen is made up of glucose, which is joined one residue to another in an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage to make a linear chain and then it also has branches separated by about 8 to 10 glucosyl residues and these branches are in alpha 1,6 linkage. So in essence, we are saying you have alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages Let me just make sure I have my duster Okay, don't have it Alright, so you have your alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages where your Hydroxyl group, which was around the anomeric carbon, makes a linkage with a hydroxyl group that is at carbon number four of another glucosyl residue. In that manner, this here is an alpha alpha 1,4 or alpha 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage so it will continue such that you would have other glucosyl residues there and others there Other there until it makes a whole long chain. But at the end of the day, you have one end here, which has a hydroxyl group around the anomeric carbon, and this end is referred to as the reducing end. Then there is this other end here, which would actually have a free hydroxyl group. So let's say this continues, and then you have the last one which will look like this. So you have other 1,4 glycosidic linkages there, and then you have the last one here, which has a hydroxyl group free at carbon number four. This end is referred to as a non-reducing end. Now, when you talk about the branches, the branches are actually going to be located at carbon number six. 
So it means that these branches will attach in and out of 1,6 glycosidic linkage in such a manner. H H and then it continues in that way so that what you have here is your carbon 1 and your carbon 6 attaching in an alpha 1,6 linkage so you have your alpha 1,6 linkage and then it continues as alpha 1,4 going there and then you have your alpha 1,4 in this linear chain in essence the structure of glycogen what it's going to look like in simple terms is something like this you have these as your glucosine residues you have this as your non-reducing end, that as your reducing end, which is that, and then at about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you have this kind of 1,6 glycosidic linkage, and then the rest continue in 1,4. In that manner. And then it continues because you could still see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, another linkage there. Like that, and glycogen in itself becomes a highly branched molecule. Alright? So you could see that it would actually have a lot of branches, something like that. So what we are actually saying is this, where the branch is met, this is an alpha 1,6 linkage, and where it continues there and there and there, these are all alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages. So today, as we discuss glycogen metabolism, I would want us to have an understanding of how this glycogen is going to be synthesized. The process of synthesis of glycogen is referred to as glycogenesis. Also, we will discuss how this glycogen, once it has been synthesized, it's also going to be broken down to produce glucose. The process of breakdown of glycogen is referred to as glycogenolysis. So in a nutshell, this is what glycogen will look like. This is the molecule that we want to synthesize. So, with this information in background, you know that you have a non-reducing end on this side and also understanding that you will have this one reducing end here and all these other ends being non-reducing. You would notice that in the process of glycogen synthesis and breakdown, this is going to happen from the non-reducing ends. So the synthesis of glycogen would occur from the non reducing end, the breakdown of glycogen occurs from the non-reducing end as well. And this explains why the branches become crucial. They become crucial because since glycogen is highly branched, the process of synthesis becomes very fast because there are many sites where the synthesis is going to be occurring. In the same vein, the process of breakdown is actually also going to be fast because there are many sites where breakdown is actually going to occur for you. 
which are the non-reducing ends, and you only have one reducing end. Where this is not going to be occurring. Okay. You only have this one end, these other ends are all going to be non-reducing. So if glucose is going to be added, it's going to be added to the non-reducing ends, and as such, this is going to be a very quick process. Breakdown is going to occur from the non-reducing end, and as such, this is going to actually occur at a quick rate as well. So that is about your structure of glycogen. So let's now delve into glycogenesis. Now that you have an idea of the structure of glycogen. How is this molecule synthesized? So, glycogenesis. Glycogenesis, as I have already introduced, is the process of synthesis of glycogen. This process would mainly occur in the cytosol, mainly occur in the cytosol, and this process is going to occur usually in specific circumstances. I've always advised you that one of the things that you have to understand whenever discussing or looking at the topic of metabolism is what are the circumstances within the body. Because it is the circumstances within the body that would dictate whether this particular metabolic pathway is going to proceed. So, the process of synthesis of glycogen is going to occur mainly when you actually have consumed a carbohydrate rich meal. This is when it was going to occur the most. When we come to regulation, I will come and detail how this would particularly happen, but you need to know that this is going to occur mainly when you have eaten a carbohydrate rich meal, such as you have eaten your pap, your shima. This is when glycogen synthesis would occur the most. And the reason is simple, because you have a high amount of carbohydrate, particularly glucose, you have a higher secretion of insulin, and when there's high amounts of insulin, it will lead to activation of enzymes such as glycogen synthase, which will synthesize glycogen. This should also make sense because you are actually storing a larger macromolecule. The storage of glycogen would particularly be more in the liver. So you would store glycogen in the liver, you would also store some glycogen in the muscles. The muscles also do contain glycogen. So, how is this process going to occur? So, when you look at glycogen synthesis, it is going to happen in a number of ways. And what is particularly important is this. Glycogen synthesis would begin so much like the way the breakdown of glucose would occur. The first reaction of glycolysis, you would probably see it again. Because you have a high amount of glucose, so you will have your glucose This glucose is going to be phosphorylated to glucose 6 phosphate. Now, I made it clear that this reaction is occurring in a circumstance where you have consumed a high amount of carbohydrate. And because you have consumed a high amount of carbohydrate, you discover that if this is happening in the liver particularly, the enzyme that will be catalyzing this reaction mainly is going to be glucokinase. 
especially that hexokinase will have reached its Vmax, its saturated glucokinase, which gets saturated only when the concentration of glucose is very high, about 18 millimoles per liter, is the one that is actually going to be actively phosphorylating the glucose to glucose 6 phosphate in the liver. So it would be glucokinase playing this role. Now, you have your glucose 6 phosphate here being produced by the enzyme glucokinase in the liver. You know that this is happening in a circumstance where also glycolysis is continuing, where you know that this glucose 6-phosphate is going down the glycolytic pathway, right? Converted to fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1.6-bisphosphate, and down to produce pyruvate. At the same time, you would notice that this glucose 6-phosphate is going to undergo another reaction. This is where glucose 6-phosphate is being isomerized to glucose 